the picture behind me is one of the video um movie posters that was used to promote the film about Michael Collins in the mid 1990s and it's based on the French painting Liberty Leading the People by Eugene Delacroix. Um, I won't show the picture by Eugene Delacroix because it shows a woman with a bared breast and YouTube goes into a right tizzy when you do it, as many people have found for some reason. However, you may be asking why the heck am I showing it? It's a quite old picture and it's well over 25 years old. However, I remember when it came out and there were discussions about how it was encouraging terrorism and uh, a great bit of back and forth. However... A few, a few days ago, the Irish activist Rose Dugdale died. Well, I say Irish. An English woman who associated with Ireland would be more fair. Here's Rose Dugdale's obituary. English heiress who gave away her money and joined the provisional IRA in the 1970s. More interestingly, though, however, there's a movie about Rose due to be released soon. And I'm sure when that movie comes out, it's going to cause epic back and forth and epic arguments. But before I go on to discuss that, since Rose is nowhere near as famous as Michael Collins and nowhere near as well-known a figure, let's do a bit of background on her. Um, Here's Rose outside the North London Claimants Office. She set up to support marginalised people. That's probably in Tottenham where she set up a co-op at one point. On the night of 26th of April 1974, 19 prize masterpieces were stolen at gunpoint from Rusborough House, the County Wickley, the home of Sir Alfred Beath, a former Conservative MP and South African mining heir. The hall included paintings by Goya, Velasquez, Vermeer, Rubens, Howes, Gainsborough and Gardy. Nothing by Delacroix, though. It was one of the largest art heists in history. The IRA gangs had trekked their way into the stately home south of Dublin, led by a woman pretending to be a French tourist whose car had broken down. Rose Dugdale died, I believe, on Monday morning, early in the morning in her sleep. Um, she may have started out as an Oxford-educated debutant and heiress, but her unconventional life spiralled through political activism into Republican violence. I'm going to put the Guardian article up there, but in fairness, I'm also going to put articles up from opposing political points of view because the Guardian will, of course, try and be moderately left-wing. Then you'll have the Belfast Telegraph, which I'll give a link to, which will probably take another point of view, and others. Um, for some further background, here's Wikipedia. Dugdale was born into a wealthy English family on the 21st of March 1941. Her millionaire father was an underwriter at Lloyd's of London who owned Yarty Farm. Great name, that Yarty Farm. A 600-acre, 2.4-kilometre squared estate of memory near Axminster. Wondered they have a lot of carpets there. The family also owned a house in London near Chelsea Hospital, and Dugdale was educated at the nearby Miss Ironside School for Girls in Kensington, West London. It's another great name that she was a popular um, a fellow with um, a fe- pupil with fellow pupil Virginia Ironside stating everyone adored this generous, clever and dashing millionaire's daughter. Well, when you're a millionaire's daughter, it's quite probably quite easy to get adored. But then I'm quite cynical about that sort of stuff. Um, after completing her early education, Dugdale was sent abroad to finish uh, attend a finishing school. I don't intend to read all of this. It's, it's a bit lengthy, but to give it, a potted summary. Dugdale then went on to read political politics, philosophy, and economics at St Anne's College, University of Oxford. That's quite a common route for for bright people who didn't exactly know what to do when they went to Oxford in that era. Um, she then attended the United States, where she went to where did she go? Mount Holyoke College in South Hadley, at Massachusetts. Uh, where she submitted a thesis on Ludwig Wittgenstein, and she also studied at the University of London, where she obtained a PhD in economics. It tells you where she basically became totally radicalised at this point and somehow drifted into involvement with the IRA, and where she also set up a a claimants union in Tottenham, where that picture on one of those former um, articles is from where she advised people from Tottenham about benefits and about their rights and so on. 
she eventually stayed in Ireland and married a member of um, the IRA who was sort of um, sort of almost sort of on the outs with the IRA and, well, considered something of a loose cannon even by them. But coming back to the subject of the picture, when I accept these cookies, which I'm getting sick and tired of seeing cookies, Rose Dugdale Biotriller, Baltimore. I, I, image in pots is mesmerising as rich girl turned Irish revolutionary. I can just see when this thing comes out that people are going to be going ape about it because Michael Collins at least is regarded as um, a revolutionary of a certain type who um, the patina her time had sort of softened him into a figure that was regarded as a, a national revolutionary or what somewhat akin to a George Washington figure or so forth. But when this comes out, oh, this should be fascinating. In cinemas in, on the 22nd of March. Let's see what the news makes of this one. I'll put a link up so you can see the trailer as well.